adaptations are made to make sure that our product mix is exactly what people in Toronto and Ontario really want. Then in the fourth phase, we're going to create more stores because we only start with one flagship store and we'll actually repatriate what we've learned in Canada to the United States because our new plan involves a lot of cool online things that we don't yet do in the U.S. So let's talk a little bit about the product. Um, it's going to be healthy, easy to move around, eco-friendly, and technologically integrated. Um, we're going to have a medium to high-end price, and we're going to have some interesting um, distribution and promotion strategies. So let's drill down into that. Um, with our product, um, we definitely want something that caters to the modern needs of both our old and younger target segments. And that really requires making things convenient, ready to get on the go, but still wholesome. So we don't want to have a lot of processed foods, no saturated fats. So it's going to be an interesting mixture. We're going to try to go with eco-friendly packaging to really make that possible. Um, we're also going to have some really nice services that revolve around our um, marketplace card, which is basically our loyalty card system. Like with any traditional loyalty card system, you're going to get free products through it, various nice promotional things, but you're also going to have an online profile and um, your purchasing habits will be recorded. So if you want to order online, you'll be able to say, oh, I just want the regular. And you can select from the things you typically buy and have those delivered to you or ready for in-store pickup, um, which is going to be a really convenient feature and it'll meet everyone's new technological needs. So um, in terms of the price, um, we don't want to enter as a low-end competitor as we typically do in the United States um, because we already have Longos and other large established companies to compete with. So to deal with that, we're going to try to be a niche market um, grocery store, kind of like higher entered the American market by going for a smaller segment. We're going to have a medium to high-end price um, to cater to that. So. It's going to be a little bit more on the high end. Um, Kroger branded imports that we're going to have sold through the stores will be the cheapest things. Um, local brands are going to be a little bit more higher price, but it's still going to be towards the higher end. And in terms of advertising, um, we're going to start off with just some basic brand awareness, print and television and online ads, just so people are aware of the Kroger brand. We don't really need to educate people about grocery stores, so that's kind of nice. Um, but then after the store actually launches in phase three, we're gonna stick to just word of mouth and buzz marketing. And to do that, we're gonna have a campaign where the first 500 shoppers are going to have a free grocery tote. The first 1,000 online shoppers are also gonna get one. So you'll see them going around Toronto, you'll start to wonder what the label is, and you'll go to the store. Um, so um, that's pretty much what we have in terms of our plan. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was reading the, uh, your market uh, market assessment, and I felt like it really reflected the company <coughs> market. Um, and I was wondering why you chose Ontario as your, your first entry. There are a couple reasons. Um, one of the big reasons is that it seemed to be the most technologically integrated market. And as um, Rachel was talking about the, the really advanced food sector. So we really feel that when it comes to cutting edge, healthy, green foods, um, we're really going to have easy sourcing there. And low supply or short supply chains mean low costs, which is nice. Also, Safeway isn't located there. And we're kind of like evil battling twins in America. We don't want to deal with them in Canada, too. Um, and, you know, it's just it's a young, really dynamic market. We could learn a lot from them and then bring what we learned there back to America, which will make us stronger. And also, there want to be like increasing places of new green technology and um, obviously food leader in technology. So it's a great opportunity. Um, you is, is your marketing team concerned about possible brand confusion or organizational friction that might result uh, because you're advocating for two completely different brand strategies between the United States and Canada, that between specialized foods kind of in Canada and low cost in the United States? Not too concerned about that. Um, in America, Kroger has a lot of different sub labels. Um, Kroger's Marketplace is one of them, so there could be a little bit of conflict there. Um, but because we have this initial strategy domestically of having these different styles, it's not too much of a concern. And we also ultimately hope to integrate what we do in Canada into what we have in the United States. So hopefully conflict will be reduced as we adopt the things that work. Um, are you concerned that elderly people tend to be more thrifty and newer prices are more <coughs> high-end? Um, is that something you're concerned about? Um, it's, it's definitely 
something to consider, um, but when we look at the market, it's actually safer to, I mean, when you're a thrifty old person, typically, if that's your number one concern, you're really going to go to Longo's, because that's the brand you've known all your life, and like, that's where the prices are going to be the lowest. How so. do you capture that market? Through convenience, through the extra services that we offer. Not only that, but in a mature market, most of the aging population, as we read in class, has more disposable income. So we're thinking the higher prices shouldn't be as big of an obstacle as you know initially thought. Because you're older, your kids are gone. What else do you have to spend money on, honestly? So one more? Sure. Your plan talks about opening up multiple distribution outlets, one of them being the store and another maybe being the internet sales. I was wondering how you're planning on uh, creating to a synergy between the two distribution outlets, and then how the customer experience is going to differ and your not. It shouldn't really affect the way that you or a customer would interact with the store, mainly because um, online deliveries it will be coming directly from the same warehouse that supplies the store. So there's not going to be a lot of conflict there. And then things for in-store pickup, you'll see in a, in a large American grocery store that does things like that, they're just people going around with carts, loading them up, and getting them ready for people to pick up. It's nothing that will really clash with store operations. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much.